Okay, here we are. It's Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Sandy. Oh, in case we haven't met, I'm Sandy. I have different mugs, different things to talk about. And hey, it's morning. And you know what? This is just my way of being alone together with you. So if you're here with me live, yay. And if this is a replay and you're here with me on a replay, yay. I'm just happy you're here. Good stuff. Oh, such a big morning. Yesterday, I wanted to talk to you about um, an article that was given to me from Psychology Today. My significant other is a psychologist, so that's the magazine we get, you know what I mean? And it's awesome. I don't know if you've ever looked at it, but I strongly recommend it because it's not really written like for somebody who's gone to school for 47,000 years to learn about psychology. It's easy to read, interesting articles. But this section I really liked. It's called the, you can't really see it, can you? Mm, there it is, the untranslatables. I thought this article, or at least this list was so awesome because it's a list of words in other languages, other than English primarily, um, words that we don't have words for. I mean, I can remember as a kid growing up, my mother would speak Yiddish. Now, I didn't speak Yiddish, I didn't know what she was talking about, but I would always hear her translate this one little word into a whole sentence. I think you can probably follow now. So for example, I had some favorites here. Wait a minute. Um, oh, in Portuguese, there's a word, it, I believe it's pronounced cafuné, and it's the act or gesture of tenderly running one's fingers through a loved one's hair. Well, I just had to give you like a whole sentence to explain it. And hello, they have one word for something. You know what that's like to run your fingers through someone's hair when you love them? Kafune. Really, isn't that cool? And then there's this one. Oh, solo free. It's Icelandic. It means sun holiday when workers are granted unexpected time off to enjoy a particularly sunny or warm day. How cool is it to have a word that's like for a sun holiday? I can remember moving from Chicago to LA and we had rain days instead of snow days. Well, everybody who lives in the snow knows what a snow day is, right? but I'd never heard of a rain day. Rain day is basically the same as a snow day. Anyway, different cultures obviously have different things that are important to them, but there's another one here I loved, I loved, I loved. Wait a minute, let me find it for you. Oh, in Indonesian, there's a word, I'm gonna pronounce it gemas, G-E-M-A-S. It's a feeling of love or affection the urge to squeeze someone because they're so cute. How cool to just know you want, oh, I want to gloss that kid. Well, no, that would make it a verb and this is a noun, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I have a list of them. I'll share some more with you during the week, but they're awesome. Words for things that we say in a whole sentence and they have one word because it's such an important part of their culture. Oh, by the way, today's the end of August and I told you by next month I would be doing YouTube Live. It's not happening yet. I don't understand how to do it. I, do, I really, if there's somebody out there who wants to tutor me, I'm open. I'm trying to learn, I really am. Mm. Good morning, Jan and Opa and Marlene and Henry. I'm so glad you're all here with me. Okay, wait, let me see who else is here. There should be some more messages down there on the side. Happy Monday. Good morning, Renee. 
Um, oh, in Houston, you had rain days? Well, they were kind of cool too because it meant you got to stay home. You know what I mean? That was pretty cool. Um, can you see behind me? Whoops, let me, let me see if I can see behind me. So behind me, you see all those flowers? I was at Trader Joe's yesterday. If you don't have Trader Joe's where you are, I'm so sorry. You can come use mine. I love their flowers. They're not very expensive, comparatively speaking. And, oh, wait, Opa says there's a YouTube tutorial on how to go live on YouTube. I'm gonna have to watch it because I tried to read it and it used words I didn't understand. Anyway, back to the flowers. My joy, my absolute fun joy is to go buy like six or eight bouquets of different kinds of flowers and make arrangements out of them. So I put the ones I did yesterday behind me so you could see. I mean, seriously, so much fun. And they're so beautiful. Anyway, that's what I did yesterday during the morning. I played my tennis, then I did my flowers. We went to another concert out in the middle of the desert and it was a, um, a like a Moulin Rouge. It was a can can and um, dancing and singing under the stars and the full moon and oh my God, what a gorgeous night it was. It was glorious, totally glorious. Um, Sunflowers are your favorite? Oh, Henry likes, how can you not have sunflowers? You know, I mean, sun, hello. So you don't have to receive flowers. You can buy your own flowers. Totally fun. By the way, you gotta cut the bottoms off, put them in the water, you know, in the, you know, use those little packets that they give you. I like to mix and match, and I like flowers that smell and Costco has a good deal on flowers, but they don't last that long and they don't smell that good. Just saying, just saying. That's my experience. Maybe you've had better experiences. My favorite florist right now and for the last few years has been Trader Joe's because they last for a week or two. Well, you'll be watching them. You'll be seeing these flowers all week. I'm all over the house. Um, okay, it's Huck Perlman. Happy birthday. How can you not love the violin, by the way? especially when you have a master playing it. I had a uh, viola when I was a little kid. I didn't take lessons or anything. For some reason, there was a viola in the house. It's just kind of like a small violin. I was a small person and we used to make music on it. Okay, we called it music. It wasn't really much music. Mm. It's also Maria Montessori's birthday. She was born in like 18, 1870, I think, Maria Montessori in Italy. And for those of you who don't have children or have never been a child, she developed the Montessori learning system, which is very child oriented. Um, you work in blocks of time. You're kind of not a lot of socialization, which is why as an educator, I didn't love it, but Boy, the learning was amazing. So, Montessori. I promised you a little longer celebrity story. This is not my longest one, thank goodness, because we're run out of time, but I do want to tell you about it. I worked at a Montessori school when I was first married, um, and it was just, you know, like a job. I, I worked there. I, I wasn't a Montessori teacher, but I was in school. I was at UCLA and aside from other things, I was taking education courses and I wanted to experience all kinds of things. Worked in Montessori. Had this little girl, this adorable, precocious little thing in my class. I don't even remember her name now, but she went like this. Hello, my name is I'm going to say Susie because I don't remember. My name is Susie Green. Um, my father is Shecky Green. You probably have heard of him, the star of stage, screen, and television. Apparently her father had taught her to say that because she was like 
three or four years old, cute as a bug's ear, and she told me about her famous dad. This school was, you know, in LA, so there were a lot of、uh, Hollywood kids in there. Anyway, ex-husband and I were going camping up in the mountains for the weekend. And we were going to be staying at a friend's cabin.、It、was pretty exciting. It was cold winter. We brought steaks and wine, and we were going to go up and sit by the fire and have a great time. But when we got up there, at about seven o'clock at night, when it was already dark, we discovered that our friend had forgotten to turn on the electricity or the gas or anything else. And You know, it was like the middle of winter. We couldn't stay in the snow with no heat, and no light. So we decided, even though it was like a three-hour drive, that we were going to go back down the mountain, and we were going to drive to Las Vegas. We'd never been. We thought it would be really fun. So we got to Vegas at like I don't know. It was whatever it was. It was like really, really late. And we started stopping at places to get a room, and there were, you know, it's like <laughs> it was like no rooms at the inn. Apparently, there were all these conventions in town, no place for us to go. So we ended up at the Riviera Hotel, which I don't even know if it's there anymore, but back then it was still kind of Rat Pack famous. So we went to the Riviera, and we decided we had forty dollars with us, which back then was a lot of money. But it would take about ten dollars to fill the gas tank, so we put ten dollars into the glove box. That left us thirty dollars to eat, sleep, and gamble. Well, we had tried to find a place to sleep, and we couldn't find a place to sleep. So we decided we'd stay up all night, we'd gamble, and then we'd drive home in the morning. Well, we got down to twenty bucks. And I said, you know what? You take the twenty bucks. I'm just going to walk around. It's okay. I don't need to gamble. It was before my gambling days. And I started walking around, and I saw a sign that said Shecky Green was headlining at the Riviera that weekend, starting like the next day. So by morning, we had been playing for a while. We were sort of awake. I walked over to the desk and I said, "Could you please pay Shecky Green for me?" She looked at me. She said, "Are you kidding?" And I said, "No. Could you pay Shecky Green? I have a message from his daughter." So she paged Shecky Green. She said, "Shecky's not going to answer." And I said, "Well, tell him、uh, it's Sandy, and I need to talk to him." And I walked away to go watch the other gamblers. And about ten minutes later, I hear, "Sandy Lynette, Sandy Lynette," to the. Wasn't Sandy Lynette's then, but it was Sandy to the front desk, please. So I go running over to the front desk. Hey, that's me.、Um, and they say Shecky Green's on the phone for you. Pick it up on the、uh, on the other side. I'm like totally in shock now at this point, right? So I go around the corner. I pick up one of the house phones and I say, "Hi, this is Sandy." And this voice on the other end of the phone says, "This is Shecky Green. I understand you have a message for me." And I said, "Yes, it's so nice to talk to you,、um, and it's a good thing you called me because if you didn't call me, I was going directly to the newspapers with this story." And then I told him about his daughter telling me how cute he was, and how I mean, how famous he was, and how cute she was, and blah blah blah. Apparently, even the biggest of stars want to hear about their children, right? And he says to me, "Sir, you're coming to my show tonight." And I'm chatting with him like we're old friends. I said, "Yeah, well, you know what? We don't even have a place to stay, so I don't think so. I think we're just going to drive home." He says, "That's ridiculous. I have a suite there. You can stay in my suite." So we hang up the phone, and I'm paged again, and I go back to the desk, and they say,、uh, "Here are your keys, Mr. Green. Ask that you be sent up. Swear to you, the man." Gave us his suite in Las Vegas. It was like this huge top floor kind of thing.、Um, there were telephones in every room, which at that point was like unheard of. There were TVs in every room. Huge, huge bed. We were bouncing on the bed. We called everyone we knew to tell them about Shecky Green, 
And then it was time to go to the show that next night. And all we had were our camping clothes and we looked like homeless people, but we went anyway. And the maitre d' looked at us, looked at our names, kept shaking his head, made a phone call, found out we were legit. We went and saw the show. The next morning, I mean, that, that next morning when we went to check out, we had ordered room service like crazy. We figured we'll put it on a credit card. This only happens once in a lifetime. We called everyone we knew. We did everything there was to do. And we went to cash, you know, to, to pay and, and leave. And Shecky Green had picked up the entire tab for us. Shecky Green, wherever you are, you made a memory that we will take with us forever. What a glorious weekend. Do you ever sleep, Henry wants to know. I do. I usually go to bed, seriously, between 9 and 9.30 at night, and then I'm up between 4 and 4.30. Yesterday, last night, because it was a concert, I went to bed late, so I didn't get my usual sleep. That's why I have these. But I promise you, they'll be gone in an hour and I'll be full of energy and life again. <sighs> okay, my friends, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Go get out in nature. That's what I wanted to tell you. We had a camp out for dinner last night. Yeah, seriously. We took like a little camp stove and made hamburgers and oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. And that's what we did before we went to that outdoor concert. What a great day. And now I've got a new hike to 49 Palms. We got to do that this coming week. Mm. I love you guys. I'm out of time. Really, I'm out of time. But I will see you tomorrow full of good news, good stuff. And by the way, I'd love your input on music because I'm going to start a whole new line of word art based on how incredible music can make us feel. I love you. Until tomorrow. Lama, lama, lama. See you then. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.